Professor Irshad Manji, an Islamic reformer, believes the Quran can be interpreted along more feminist lines. The Quran is very, very clear that in the eyes of God, men and women have equal rights and equal responsibilities. At the Prophet Muhammad's own beloved first wife, uh, Khadija, was a wealthy, self-made entrepreneur. All right, ABC, you've finally managed to tick me off. You just told millions of people that according to Islam, men and women have equal rights and responsibilities before Allah. And what evidence does Ursad Manji give? She says that Khadija was a wealthy, self-made entrepreneur. I wonder why Miss Manji failed to mention the fact that Khadija was a wealthy, self-made entrepreneur before Islam, before she married Muhammad, before Muhammad even began receiving revelations. In other words, if Khadija's social status is evidence of equality between men and women, it would be evidence of equality between men and women in pagan Mecca, before the rise of Islam. But ABC News doesn't tell us any of that. All we get is the misrepresentation. So, why would ABC tell us that men and women are equal in Islam? I suspect it's because they know most people don't have the resources or the time to carefully examine what we see on the news. But I do. Let's take a look at what Islam really teaches about men and women. Surah 434 is always a good place to start. Men are in charge of women. Why? Because Allah hath made the one of them to excel the other. By nature, men excel women. And because they spend of their property for the support of women. So good women are the obedience, guarding in secret that which Allah hath guarded. But what do you do if women get out of line? As for those from whom ye fear rebellion, admonish them and banish them to beds apart and scourge them. Then, if they obey you, seek not a way against them. The Quran is very, very clear. It certainly is, Miss Manji. So, men are in charge of women. They're superior to women. They excel women. And if women get out of line, men are commanded to beat them into submission. Sorry, ABC, but this doesn't sound like equality. Nor is there equality when it comes to how many marriage partners a person can have. Surah 4.3 says, And if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with the orphan girls, then marry other women of your choice, two or three or four. Yes, you heard that correctly. Muslim men can marry up to four women. Can Muslim women marry up to four men? No. Is this what you call equality, ABC? We should also note that Muslim men can have more sexual partners than just their four wives. Muslim men get to have sex with their war captives and slave girls, those whom their right hands possess. Consider Surah 23, 1 through 6. The believers must eventually win through those who humble themselves in their prayers, who avoid vain talk, who are active in deeds of charity, who abstain from sex, except with those joined to them in the marriage bond, or the captives whom their right hands possess, or in their case they are free from blame. What I find rather horrifying is that Muslims can have sex with their captives and slave girls, even if the captives and slave girls are married. Surah 424 declares that a Muslim man can't have sex with a married woman unless she's a captive or a slave girl. The verse reads, also forbidden are women already married, except those captives and slaves whom your right hands possess. Do Muslim women get to have sex with their captives and slaves? No. That's not equality. So, Muslim men get to have sex with up to four wives and as many sex slaves as they're able to capture or purchase. They also get to have sex with women in just about any way they can think of. The Quran discusses sexual positions in Surah 2, 223, which says, Your wives are as a tilth unto you, so approach your tilth when or how ye will. The Quran is very, very clear. Let's look at a typical commentary on this verse. Tafsir Jalalain reads, 
Your women are a tillage for you, that is, the place where you sow the seeds of your children. So come to your tillage, that is, the specified place, the front part, in whichever way you wish, whether standing up, sitting down, lying down, from the front or the back. Do women get to demand sex in any position they see fit? No. That's not a quality. So, things are certainly unequal in this life. What about the afterlife? In our video exposing the raisins myth, we saw that in paradise, Muslim men will receive a number of huris, large-breasted virgins who are made to be the ultimate sex slaves. Will women receive huris? No, they'll continue being the wives of Muslim men. The only difference is that in paradise, women will now have to share their husbands with specially designed sex machines called huris. Muslim women of the world, I ask you, how does it feel knowing that in paradise you'll be competing for the affections of your husband with a ton of women who are designed to be the ultimate sex partners? This is assuming, of course, that you actually make it to paradise. Muhammad said that most of the inhabitants of hell are women. The prophet said, I saw the hellfire and I had never seen such a horrible sight. I saw that most of the inhabitants were women. The people asked, oh Allah's apostle, why is it so? The prophet said, because of their ungratefulness. It was asked whether they are ungrateful to Allah. The prophet said, they are ungrateful to their companions of life, husbands, and ungrateful to good deeds. So, according to Muhammad, most of the inhabitants of hell are women. The women are in hell because they're ungrateful to their husbands and because they don't perform enough good deeds. But this means that women are less moral than men, according to Muhammad. They're also less intelligent. In Surah 2, 282, the Quran discusses contracts, and we find that the testimony of a woman is worth half the testimony of a man. It says, and get two witnesses out of your own men. And if there are not two men available, then a man and two women, such as you agree for witnesses. So that if one of them, one of the two women, errs, the other can remind her. The Quran is very, very clear. According to Muhammad, the reason women aren't as reliable as men is that they're stupid. The Prophet said, Isn't the witness of a woman equal to half of that of a man? The women said, Yes. He said, this is because of the deficiency of her mind. Let's read a final passage that combines the lack of intelligence and the lack of good morals aspects of women. Muhammad said, O women folk, you should give charity and ask much forgiveness, for I saw you in bulk amongst the dwellers of hell. A wise lady among them said, Why is it, Messenger of Allah, that our folk are in bulk in hell? Upon this, the Holy Prophet observed, You curse too much and are ungrateful to your spouses. I have seen none lacking in common sense and failing in religion, but at the same time robbing the wisdom of the wise besides you. Upon this, the woman remarked, What is wrong with our common sense and with our religion? He, the Holy Prophet, observed, Your lack of common sense can be well judged from the fact that the evidence of two women is equal to one man. That is a proof of the lack of common sense. So, how exactly are women equal to men in Islam? They're not equal in intelligence or common sense. They're not equal in morality. They're not equal in the number of sexual partners they can have in this life or the afterlife. The value of their testimony isn't equal. Men are in charge of women. Men excel women. Men yet get to uh, beat women. Men and women aren't equal at all in Islam. And we didn't even have time to get to the veil or muta, temporary marriage that amounts to no more than prostitution, or the Quran allowing sex with prepubescent girls, etc. So, why does ABC News continue to mislead millions of viewers, trying desperately to convince us that Islam is perfectly compatible with Western values? Stay tuned. I assure you, we will get to the bottom of this.